Uh, hi everyone! Welcome to Friday Night Crafting. I'm Vicky Kello, your independent stamping up demonstrator for Brisbane. Just trying to log into the iPad so I can see what's going on. Hi Kerry! How's everyone's week been? There I am. Let's have some comments. Excellent. Hi Karen. Hope everyone's had a good week. Oh, I've got seven people on straight away. Everyone's on tonight. Hi Marie. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, I'm just counting down the days. Really, Kerry? I um, I have actually been really busy this week. I've had a monster review um, to do, but it keeps me on my toes. So, hi Wendy, thanks for sharing. Hi Gail. Right. Um, so, did, has everyone seen the cover of the um, holiday catalogue? And for those of us that are demos, have we put our pre-orders in? Yay! I have. Hi Chrissy. <laughs> um, so this week the holiday catalogue went live. Hi Glenda. Um, so the demonstrators are allowed to pre-order so we could put our orders in the, on the 1st of August and customers can order from the holiday catalogue to um, on the 4th of September. I'm still supposed to work Marie until the 30th of September at this stage so um, but we should go into redeployment I'm thinking in a couple of weeks so we go into redeployment end of August and then finish 30th of September um, unless I find something in between times uh, so I sat down and I put my wish list together it did take quite a while because I had a whole page and a half of wish list and a funds do not permit me being able to order everything on my wish list so then I had to rewrite it out again and rewrite it out again and so I did it about three times before I actually put my order in and I'm pretty happy hi Carrie um, I hopefully should be able to show you guys some product that I get next Friday so um, so that'll be a bit exciting if you are a customer and don't think you can wait until the 4th of September, then you could join my team uh, and become a demonstrator. And Stamping Up is doing, hi mum, is doing a um, bonus promotion, which was last month and this month, that if you join um, now, instead of getting $235 worth of product, you get a 200 and eighty dollars worth of product, so you get an additional forty-five dollars worth of free product of your choice. You can choose whatever you like, and you can choose from the holiday catalog because that's now available for pre-order. Um, so you can choose anything you like. You get free postage on that, and then any additional orders that you do, <laughs> we all have that problem with our wish list. Yes, it's a massive, and I've written it out a few times, but. Um, I've been good I've stuck to my budget this time hi Deb and um, didn't go over my budget and then when it goes live I'm like it's free for all I can hopefully purchase <laughs> what I like but um, yes um, so you get free postage and then 20% off all your orders and you don't have to meet any minimum requirements until the 30th the 31st of December um, so it's a pretty good deal to sign up because you get access then to the holiday catalogue, you'll get access to the annual catalogue and as a demonstrator in December you'll also get access to the occasions um, catalogue that comes out as well. So if you sign up right now you can get access to three of our catalogues over that period of time while still being a demonstrator. Pretty good deal. 
if you want to just let me know I can give you some more information about that um, so that's all I've got really about my business tonight but we um, it's a new month so which means we get to have a new sketch so this is the sketch and I've got it on backwards here I haven't flipped the camera yet hang on um, I was playing with the washi tape so I've stuck that on there this is so slow tonight There we go. So now you can read it right, right way around. So that's the sketch that's available for this month now. So if you want to participate in that, this is a pinned post on my Facebook page. And you've got all month to participate and you just um, create a card using this sketch layout as your inspiration. And post a picture of it in the comments section of the pinned post. And you go into the drawer at the end of the month for a little prize from me which I'll post or hand to you um, if you're local uh, so usually Friday night classes I or Friday night lives I create cards using this sketch I am not prepared at all tonight for anything um, so I got as far I'll show you I got as far as cutting some pieces because I wanted to use the pressed petal washi tape I went with the colors soft suede and the I think the pressed petals goes better personally with rich razzleberry than it does with the Merry Merlot so they're the colors that I started with and so I tried cutting this little design thing and then I wanted to use the birch background, so that's as far as I got. And then I haven't done anything else. And I'm really not feeling inspired by this sketch. I'm just looking at it for the last half hour going, I got nothing. So instead, we're going to really craft on the fly tonight, which I don't usually do. I usually have a lot more things prepared. And... We're going to use the Sea of Silhouette paper. I have had this paper for a little while and I've not used it. So I did while I was waiting, sitting on the couch before watching um, Hunter's shows, cut out some leaves and I have cut out some flowers. But that's as far as I've got. Um, so I really like the pigment sprinkles and I'm getting better at using them but I find this paper makes me look professional at using them um, and I don't get really nice images like this when I use pigment sprinkles just yet hi Beck so we can use that paper or the leaves I'm cutting out leaves at this point this one or that's the back we have the hexagons and then those ones now everyone I've spoken to or that has seen this paper really likes it but then finds it's a bit bit much and then struggling to use it I really like that so I thought what I'd do tonight is maybe make a few cards on the fly and just show you that you could just use a little bit of um, DSP you don't have to use a whole lot and um, it still makes an impact on the card so I've got some sets out that have um, sentiments that I thought we could use because we don't want too much um, else we don't want too many images on there because I think the DSP is busy enough so I just wanted sentimenty stamps so we've got perennial birthday because that's a nice big happy birthday um, stamp I've got the itty bitty birthdays And I do have birthday backgrounds, but I don't know that we'll need that. And then I do have special celebrations. 
because I have had this stamp set for a while and haven't even used it. But then I was reading the sentiments on it and it's like wedding and um, things like that or sympathy and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. Don't know whether we'll use that or not, but I got it out. So we'll see. So you can see when I start crafting how my mind works with doing it. It might help you guys create, but um, it could end up in a big mess as well. But before we get there, um, if you comment and like my, uh, comment and share my uh, video, then you go into the draw for a um, gift. So from last week's video, the winner is uh, Marie. So you've got a set of, because I thought the, because the holiday catalog's out, I'll give a item from the holiday catalog last year, which is the mini ornaments embellishments. So they're from last year. So I'll bring them to the class tomorrow, Marie. And then because it is the end of the month, last month's sketch challenge, we had three entries in that. Um, so we did a random draw before and Carrie Ann won. So I found when I was cleaning up, um, I've got a whole packet here of the Stamping Up Heart Treat Cups, which are from a little while ago. Um, so we'll give them as a prize for Carrie Ann. And um, yes, so congratulations ladies and I'll bring them to class tomorrow. Um, but don't forget to comment and share on the page and you go into the draw for next week. And now I'll flip you over and we can start crafting. Well, I don't seem to be. Okay, so I thought given that the paper is um, really, really bright and really busy, we would stick with um, Whisper White cards. So I've cut a few card bases that are Whisper um, out of the thick Whisper White. So I have a few of those. And the only other thing that I've prepped is a couple of layers in some colors that match the DSP. So for those of you that may not know, when you get our pack of DSP, on the back is all the coordinating colors in here. So I've cut, I didn't cut in Blackberry Bliss because I have to order some, I'm down to two sheets. So I was a bit, bit scared to use it when I'm down that low. So that'll have to go on my order. I've got Crush Curry, uh, I got Flirty Flamingo, Mango Melody, I didn't do Mossy Meadow, I uh, didn't do Night of Navy, I've got Old Olive, Pacific Point, Poppy Parade, Real Red, Rich Razzleberry, and then White. So we are using a lot of those colours. So I've cut two um, bases in each, or two layers in each of those colours, and then I've cut another layer which just fits on there and it's an eighth of an inch under just in the whisper white. So I was going to just grab a punch quickly. Hi Denise. So I've just grabbed my starburst punch and my two inch circle because these layer really nicely um, so for some of the sentiments we might uh, layer with the punches just wanted to be a bit prepared for that but as you saw before I haven't even cut my cardstock uh, my DSP at all so we'll show you how I do that now um, some people are a bit scared to chop their paper. I have no issue chopping my paper. And if you use it all, you can just buy more. So, I did, I have made myself a pact this year that I wasn't gonna buy any more paper until I have used my existing paper. 
and I have re really done well using my stamping up paper. I still have a lot of old Kayser paper that's just lying around that I haven't yet used, but in terms of stamping up, I've actually done really well, I think. So, you kind of got to think when we've got um, patterns on paper as to which direction you want the cards to go. I'm thinking that, where did I put that card base? I want my cards to be, I'll get here, this way. So they open up like that. Whatever that way is. Horizontal. Um, so, to get the most out of your paper, if you cut it like the love it, chop it way, um, which is just a layer of cardstock and a layer of DSP on a card, then it's for, for my card bases. Thanks for sharing, um, Sue. My layer on my card is four inches by five and three quarters. Hi Chrissy. So then if you cut a quarter of an inch smaller than that, oh, an eighth of an inch, then you get that. Now that would fit I don't think I did a purple one in the end. Maybe I didn't. So it, that could go on Flirty Flamingo. So that layers on there nicely. So you could leave that as your card front. But what I often do is cut my whole paper pad like this and then um, so that it fits in those clear mount cases, whether you do wood mount or um, the clear mount cases and then from there cut down from this so that there's less wastage because then you get if you do that you'll get six card fronts out of a piece of 12 by 12 with very minimal wastage and if you do that to a whole paper pad that's 72 card fronts so there's Two of them like that. And there's always two sides to a piece of paper. So if you're not a fan of this side, then you can use this side, which I actually think looks like the thanks uh, girls for sharing, actually thinks looks like the um, galaxy backgrounds. And I've tried doing a galaxy background myself, and I can tell you it didn't look at, didn't look as good as that. So why try really hard when stamping up have made it really easy to do it? So we're just gonna cut I'll cut this one as well. the same method and then we'll just make a few cards and if you want I've seen plenty of people keep these little strips and make other cards with them I personally don't but these strips I do keep they're a bit thicker and to me they're a bit more user friendly those little tiny strips I don't keep them I don't have any interest in keeping those I often match as your nail polish again I've done well haven't I I said I got my nails done last night Deb and I said to my nail lady she goes what colours do we want tonight and I said we want bling lots of bling and I think I want to go with purple I haven't had purple like a, a bright purple from her or dark purple so I have done it done well again so we'll put the trimmer away for a little bit. 
and we'll make a couple of cards with just um, these as the layers and we can show you how easy that is so we just need to pick some colors that match so I think we could do I think the red gets lost on that that one I think the yellow stands out a bit better on that so I might do yellow and I think flirty flamingo goes well with the little pink in there so we'll do those two Now, I have done the layer of white, which lays straight over that as well. So, because sometimes I'll stick a layer of white behind a piece of the um, paper to help it stand out a bit, which might help on this one actually. and it doesn't quite get as lost as it did without that white on there. Then you just need to trim like an eighth of an inch off <coughs> the um, DSP. But I don't have an issue with that and just throwing that as a scrap then later because I find it easier to store the clear mount cases with all my paper cut up in them. So I'm okay with that. But Kerry suggested green, so what if we put green maybe for this? Oh, the green looks good too. Might do green for that. And this one. So when I have a full piece, oh, I'm making a big mess here. A full piece of DSP that's covering my layer, I then like to punch out my sentiment or whatever I'm doing from the base. Hi Marnie, thanks for joining. I did have a good week. Hope you had a good week. So just punch that out from the middle. Punch that one out. And then we'll just put them to the side. I need to get some white. We've got some scraps of white and work out what we're going to do for a sentiment that's going to fit in the two inch circle so we've got birthday wishes and then happy birthday Birthday wishes is going to be a bit tight to fit in there. It's happy birthday a bit smaller. Happy birthday is a bit smaller. That'll fit. And I think I'm just going to use some old olive. I'll just get my inks because I haven't got anything out. Those inks and some wipes. Okay, and we'll stamp. birthday in the green and then we'll stamp happy birthday in the flirty flamingo and 
and maybe with the birthday background we might punch them out first that's not the one this one Whoops, maybe I should close up those ink pads. Um, so, I want to stick with this. I've got the birthday backgrounds just sitting here now. So, I want to do the streamers. Maybe I might do them in rich razzleberry and I might get the blue out. Rich razzleberry blue. So that we change up the colours a bit. So and have the streamers. We still see what I'm doing. I've got so many ink pads here now. I'm just going to stamp the streamers up the top so we've got some streamers hanging down. And do the same with the bottom. That looks a bit cool. And now we'll do the same with, we'll close up the old olive and close up the flirty flamingo and the rich raspberry. The only problem when you're dealing with a DSP that's got loads of colours and you're doing something like this, you will end up probably in a bit of a mess. But that's okay. That's what crafting's all about. I'm going to do the blueberry bushel for the blue one. I hadn't used this back, birthday backgrounds either, and then I was trying to prepare for this class for yeah this class um, on Sunday afternoon, and the hunter was not letting me have a bar of it. He wanted to craft with me. So he chose the stamp set. And then he chose a whole heap of colours that he wanted to stamp. And I don't know why. He likes all the light colours. I like all the bright colours. So he chose from the subtles. And then he proceeded to stamp these two card fronts. He had a ball. But um, yeah, it wasn't getting any of my design done or anything but that was left over on my desk so I thought well I'll try and use that tonight so he's a budding crafter as well good for four uh, we'll just put that stamp away for this happy birthday otherwise I'll lose that so this is itty bitty birthdays and birthday background now we will get some tape and just tape the sentiment down to the layer of cardstock. <laughs> he had fun, Glenda. That's all that counts. I usually only let him play with my retired stuff, so I think he enjoyed playing with some stuff that mummy doesn't normally let him play with. I'll put some tape everywhere while we're doing this. Okay, so that get these colours. 
goes right. This one goes on the old olive. It does seem a shame when the paper is really pretty on both sides to cover up one side, but you do get two sheets of it in the paper pad. So you can use one side of one pattern and one side of the other. stamp that on. My ink came up. Put that one on. So if we put these on the card, but now you could add some ribbon or something to these as well to jazz them up a bit more. Let's just fold that. struggle to see white on white. Had to fold it first. Put some dimensionals behind that. So you could put some twine or some um, the copper thread or like silver thread or things on these as well. So you've got something else behind that, but I'm just going to leave these simple. Because the DSP is doing a lot of the work. So there's two cards and that's just using a full sheet of the DSP when you cut it as card fronts. Now I'll cut that down a little bit so that you can see um, that you don't need the whole sheet if you think it's too much or you want to conserve your DSP because you do only get 12 sheets in a pack with stamping up. And when it's really pretty, it is sometimes a bit difficult, but you know what? You just buy another pack. So we'll have this one and this one. And if we cut this one, so this is if I cut one and a half, that'll be three. Now if I cut one and a quarter, just working in my head, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter, and I get like an eighth of an inch rubbish. And then put this one Now you can put it straight on the card front, but and so you have the white behind there, which we might do on this one actually. That's kind of a bit crooked, isn't it? Might just trim that off. Yeah. 
or you could layer your piece on there. And again, this will just fit with a nice little border. And you could switch up. and give a different effect. Now with this one, because you are having the space in between, you wouldn't be able to use the starburst punch, but I could use this um, classic label on this one. And just make sure it's kind of where one of the things are going to be. And we might cut two of those out. Because then when we stamp on white for our sentiment, and we'll do might stamp this time in rich razzle berry and we'll stamp birthday wishes I think fits this maybe not Might do your growing up, and that should fit. And where did I put my block? There. So if we stamp that, can we fit that down there? Oh, I've stamped upside down but that doesn't matter because we're going to punch it out close that ink pad and we'll just clean that stamp and so when you've got a um, a punch like this which doesn't really have any layering punch that coordinates you can get this um, get a punch out and then you can just cut it in half and then layer it behind like that. So we're just going to do that. I'm just going to stick some tape on there. The classic label. Yes, Sue, I only try and use stuff that's still current. So that is still a current punch. I love it. There was a bigger one a couple of years ago, which I still have and I haven't got rid of. And I do love that. Um, but that's obviously no longer available, but this one is still current. All right, so I don't think I lined that up on camera because it's a bit hard, but it's a bit tiny. Oh, and I'll just move that so there we go I might just trim just a bit there because I'm a bit skew if so that just layers 
gives that a little bit of layer dimension on there so we'll stick the card front down and then some good helpful ideas oh thanks Sue I um, and never used to punch out of the base or anything like that because I always thought, oh, that's just, no, there's no point doing that. But it does make it easier for me to prep for workshops when we do that. I do lose, use less cardstock. And everyone wants to be savvy. And now that I actually have a budget when I craft, because um, back then I we had two disposable incomes, but on one income I've had to really think about my craft purchases. Um, yes, it does make a lot of sense to get the most out of your crafting. So we want to cover this one up first and just leave yourself a little bit of a border, like the quarter of an eighth or the eighth of the inch there and then we'll stick this one on the other end and then we can fit in between I find that's a bit easier But I finally got round to um, listing some of my retired stock on some Facebook buy sell swap pages. It's taken me a long time. I've had four boxes of retired stuff. And with the launch of the new catalog, I wanted to make sure that I could buy what I wanted. So it gave me the push to um, sell some of my retired stuff and then also sell some stuff of previous brands that I used to use or and then I'm not using anymore and things like that. It is a lot of work but it's it's good when it's gone and I have money in my account to purchase more stuff. Thanks Kerry. Alright so again you could add more bling, you could add things to it. I'm going to actually put this on this um, darker piece here just to break it up a bit. But you could put some twine or some ribbon. I'm, I might go back and embellish these a bit later but I'm just doing a sentiment and the card fronts at the moment. But breaking up, especially when the um, DSP is a bit busy, just breaking it up helps um, with that as well. So what I'm gonna do with this next piece is do it similar, but we're gonna cut um, a quarter, uh, eighth of an inch off this way because we're going to layer the white underneath it. So we're going to trim this down to one and a half, uh, five and a half. And then I'm going to cut this one in half. So we'll do two and a quarter. No, we'll do two and an eighth. It's kind of in half. One's going to be bigger than the other. It won't matter. So we're going to do, I think we're going to, that's not Poppy Parade, that's real red. Let's do Poppy Parade. I used my $9 coupons when I did my holiday caddy order and saved heap of money. Yes, I did that to Glenda. Um, it helped me get a few more things on my wish list that I didn't think I was going to be able to. 
which was good. So anybody else who made purchases last week, or last month, and have got your $9 coupons, you can now use those coupons, and they have to be used before the um, 31st of August. So they would have been emailed to you, and you just put them in. Alright, so we'll do this red one first. And I always stamp um, first because there's two sides to a piece of paper. So if we muck it up, we can go back. And we'll use this perennial birthday because I want to use this big happy birthday. This list is still a mile long. <laughs> yes. Just means you have to sell more stuff, Glenda. I'll have another class. Um, so I'm going to get Poppy Parade. Now, Poppy Parade is Mum's favourite colour, like favouritest red, and I think this might be the first time I'm inking up Poppy Parade. Did you get the discount when you purchase for pre-order or do you need to pay full price for demonstrators? No, no, you still get the 20 percent discount Kerry the only thing you can't order is um, host sets so you can't order them whether you earn you spend enough or not um, you can order host sets out of the current catalogue but you can't order host sets out of the um, the holiday catalogue so you'll have to wait till the 4th of September for that but other than that everything else is up for grabs and you still get your 20% discount when you use your coupons, the coupons come off that amount before you get your discount. So, um, hopefully that answers your your question. So we've got Poppy Parade. Now I'm going to stamp that down the bottom towards one side. Okay. If you're watching for the first time, just pop on and say hi. Make a comment because. Um, when you make a comment onto the page, then you go into the draw for a little prize giveaway uh, that I'll give away for next week. So make sure you make a comment and let me know that you're here watching. And we'll just shut up Poppy Parade because I do find it's one of those ink pads that kind of tends to go everywhere. Whoop. Now my glue dots have fallen down. So we'll get some tape. I only buy for myself and sell to a few people. That's how I started to Glenda. And I just started running, well not really running a class, I just kind of wanted to get some people together. Order still I rang them the afternoon and they were investing. Oh, that's no good, Kerry. Um, I don't usually have any any trouble. Unless the item's on back order and they think the item's gonna come in, sometimes they'll hold the order. Um, but if they haven't got a date for the item on back order, then um, yeah. It's a bit weird. Um, yeah, Glenda, I started just wanting to organise a bit of a get together for people to craft with me, and that's how I started the classes and then it just kind of developed into that and I've had a lovely group of ladies with me for the last few years. So I'm just layering the white piece onto the Poppy Parade layer and then the piece of the DSP Um, I am going to stick that more towards the top. No, I got all the details to say it was on its way with the tracking number. Oh, Australia Post, dodgy. So then that's all oh, we need to cut. Stick that on the card front would help. Finish off that card.
then just lay that on the card front. And then that's another card. And see that piece of DSP then doesn't look very busy at all. You could add a piece of ribbon, you could add some more bling, maybe some more stamping. I might go back and finish some of these with a little bit more embellishments after the video. Um, this is Pacific Point, so I'll get to that colour out. And I think we might use this happy birthday again. Might just clean that block a bit better. We've still got Poppy Parade on the block. This is probably the world's biggest block for this stamp. Clean that off. Shut the ink pads because we don't want ink everywhere. Now with this one we can use this side and just trying to look at my ribbons. I don't have any Pacific Point ribbon so I might finish that off a bit later but we'll stick all that down. So this is just to encourage you all to cut that DSP and if you've seen this in the book it does look very bright and very busy and I've had a lot of customers say oh that's a bit too much I don't think I can use that paper it's got a lot going on shows you that um, if you just cut down into tiny pieces a, you get more cards out of it, so it becomes more economical. But B, it breaks it up quite a lot. That it doesn't look so much. So we'll stick that on a card front too. And then we might use some of those flowers that I cut out to make the next card. So the flowers, I'm getting a bit of a mess here. More. Just close up some of these punches and stack them up. There's ink pads galore. Okay. So these are the flowers that I cut out earlier. So I'm thinking we might use maybe crushed curry because I haven't done a yellow card yet. Now these were really easy, I don't usually like to fussy cut, but these are really easy to fussy cut because they've got, I'll get the other sheet, the full sheet, um, they've got the big white border around them, so it does make it heaps easy. 
The leaves are a little bit more difficult, so I've only cut a few of them, but that's all right. So let's choose. Some colors and then I've got a couple of leaves to break it up a bit did you use a die cut no I fussy cut them Marie just with scissors but in all seriousness, I was sitting there watching TV with Hunter just after dinner, so it did not take very long at all. Because they are super, super quick. Because the white borders around them make them really help and um, pretty forgiving, actually, um, which is good. Okay, so can I, we might do, um, cannot believe you're a year older. So this is, can't believe you're another year older. And I think I'm going to stamp that in Poppy Parade again just to make it stand out. Make sure your stamp's up the right way. And then the other stamp that kind of goes with that says at least you'll always be younger than me. So I might stamp that on the inside. Good thing I'm wearing a black top because that just landed on my top. Did you all see my Instagram picture when I did that with the art, that arty stamp set on my orange top in black memento ink? Got a lovely ink image on my top. So we're going to stick that on there. Do I want, I feel like I want something else. I think I want some of these dots that are in the birthday background. It's just this splutchy image. It's good wording, good English, isn't it? Splutchy image. And I'm gonna do that in the old olive. We're just going to take those off. And we're just going to randomly stamp.
think this card would even qualify for simple stamping because there's been no punches used. That's a little bit surprising. I don't do simple stamping very much. Does everyone else struggle with simple stamping like I do or? Alright, now we'll stick some tape on some of these or glue dots. So I think we'll stick tape on the yellow ones and glue dots on the red. What do you mean? Simple stamping is just ink, stamps and paper. So it's no embellishment, it's no ribbon usually. Um, stamping Up have been promoting it for the last bit over 12 months. Uh, for those beginner stampers or uh, the stampers that are a bit rushed for time and things like that. I I don't mind simple stamping. I just, because I'm so used to doing it, my go-to, and I want to use the products that I have, I just automatically go to a die or I automatically use a punch or things like that. So I struggle with it. I go back to simple stamping when I run out of other ideas. See, that's a good idea, Glenda. Put that one there. And we'll just stick some glue dots up here. These leaves. I don't know which way that leaf goes. Right, and then stick them. Alright, so we might just stick them down a bit more. Oh, that glue dot still hasn't come off. And then I might just trim him off there. Right, and then with this one, see I, I don't think it's going to stay simple stamping because I'm thinking I want them in the middle. But there's still no dies used or punches, so maybe that still qualifies. It's only got a tiny bit of embellishment on there. So there's that card. And then I did really want to do one with this wavy paper. Where is that? With this stuff. So let's 
cut this down. How are we going for time? Oh. And so we'll just make this last card after I cut this. So I'm pretty sure this is the blueberry bushel. So I've got two pieces of that. Two pieces of the white. Because with this one I really think you need the white to break it up. And then we'll need to trim that. Down. So, we'll put all these flowers away so see when you cut your paper like this love this blue white paper. yes it's really pretty isn't it Marie um, and if you cut it in the love it chop it way like I'm showing you then you can store it in the uh, clear mount cases and you can then store all your cutouts like that in there too so they're all there ready to go um, when you need to use them So with this one, because it is a bit wavy, I was thinking maybe we could use this stamp, which says birthday cheers all round, but it's a bit wavy. We'll do this in blueberry bushel. It's really nice, Kerry. I, as soon as I saw it, I wanted it. And I've actually only purchased this. I haven't purchased the sweet um, or the stamp set or the dies that go with it. And the more, i oh, smudged that. The more I see projects with the dies and um, the stamp set, the more I think I should have got the dies and stamp set. So I think that could be on one of my next orders. See, that's why we always stamp first before we um, stick it down because if we smudge it like I just did, we can try and fix it. Um, so the uh, stamps that go with this set doesn't mean you have to buy them, but the stamps silhouette scenes on page 134 so this is the DSP here and then this is the stamp set that they've got um, and then there's matching dies so when I first went through this book I'm like 
I quite like this and I do actually like the sentiments in this but it didn't catch my eye enough to see uh, to purchase it but I mi completely missed that there was even um, dies that go with this so the sweet silhouette dies which are on so they cut out like that tree and there's a little um, dandelion and then there's some words so if we go to page 196 we can hopefully see that a bit better Um, see a silhouette. So we've got inspire, forever, and adventure. Then plus the little tree and the little dandelion thing. So I really like that. And the more I see it, the more I have to have it. And I haven't got it yet. But yeah. So I think that could be next on my list. I bought the DSP pack a while ago. But I haven't done anything as I've been busy. Yes. Well, I was hoping to have things prepared for today's class. And I've had nothing. So then I was sitting there going, actually, I'm going to use this and it'll make me use it. Where did I stick my tape? Here. To... Um, Put everything together and see even that side of the paper I really like that yeah I completely missed them the first time Kerry it wasn't until I saw somebody do them and I'm like where is there a dandelion um, die and they're like it's in this um, bundle and I'm like I didn't even know that set had dies with it did not see that first go round I think that happens because we get so overwhelmed with the book that we miss things. And I often look at something going, oh, not a fan of that. And then everybody seems to be creating with it. And I'm like, oh, I have to have that now. Now it has to be on my list. So we'll put this card together and then we'll put the next blue card together and that will be it tonight so because I just want to use the other side of this DSP as well so fold that over and I'll stick something on there I think to finish that off a bit later we're going to use that side of the DSP so we'll stick that down. I think we'll use that big happy birthday again. That's why I didn't put that away. And I think blueberry bushel is becoming, fast becoming my favourite blue. I have loved Pacific Point for so long. But I think blueberry bushel is giving it a run for its money. And then after the in colours are gone, I can go back to Pacific Point. Okay, so we put, might put that one down. Oh, I need tape on there. put this one down and that is our last card for tonight so I'll get all the cards out that we've just made
and try and make a bit of room here with this mess and rubbish that I've got accumulated here now. So we have these two blue ones, yes, uh, Marie, so it doesn't have to be uh, feminine and you can make them masculine as well. This yellow one, this blue one, move some of these ink pads out of the way because we did make a lot of cards tonight and they're quick easy cards. So we've got that red one. That flirty flamingo one, this flirty flamingo one, and this old olive one. So, swinging it, thanks for sharing. <laughs> no worries, Glenda, thanks for that. So, what did we make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in a bit over an hour, and I had hardly anything prepped tonight so it's quarter past nine so an hour and 15 minutes and I had hardly anything prepped so I might go back and finish a couple more off and maybe add some embellishments or something to them because I think that's a bit plain but I'll find something and add to it um, but you've got the basis pretty much of eight cards there and all done and dusted so we did use a mixture of stamp sets tonight Focusing on birthday, so I did the birthday backgrounds, perennial birthday, and itty bitty birthday. But really, it was all based around this paper pad, the Sea Silhouette. So, if you've seen it in the catalog and you think it's too much, or you've bought it and you haven't used it, get it out, use it. Um, it's really easy and I've just made heaps of cards with that and if you keep going on that same technique that I've done you'll end up with a hundred cards out of this paper pad so there'll be thousands of them but yes all right and if you're interested in purchasing any of the products for tonight they're available in my store um, if you just click on the go to my online store um, they will be available in there or you can contact me and I'll help you place an order so those ladies that I'm seeing in the morning for the card class, see you then. Um, and if not, I am in the process of trying to look at scheduling an online class. So hopefully for those that aren't um, relatively close to me, if you're interested in any of my classes, I should have an online class out in the next few weeks. So look out for that. And hopefully everyone got my newsletter that went out on Thursday. If you haven't registered on my website which is vixcraftycreations.com to receive my newsletter that comes out on the first of each month with all the um, Stampin' Up! specials and then any specials I run and my class schedule. So thank you everyone for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! See how this is red though?